This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to install a graphics card into a Dell Precision T7810 workstation. Uh, more importantly, we're going to install a GTX 1080 Ti graphics card into this system. So we did a previous video on a complete Precision T7810 gaming build. In that system, we did a regular GTX 1080, which was awesome, but we've had a bunch of requests to basically install a 1080 ti because uh, we've had some of our community members have issues with the power requirements so we're going to show you um, how to fix those power requirements how to install a nvidia driver and then we're at the end of the video we're going to do some benchmarks for you so if you liked the other video you'll definitely like to see this video um, basically it's the same configuration other than we're doing the 1080 ti so here's the graphics card we're going to install it's the EVGA 1080 Ti SC2. Um, be careful about getting the FTW version of this card. Uh, if you do get it, you probably won't be able to shut your side panel. So this card will this card will work. It will fit. So uh, before you attempt to do this, if you're trying to copy what we're doing, make sure you have the 825 watt power supply installed. Um, just because this graphics card does dry, draw quite a bit of power. Um, and if you don't know how to check, look at the back of your chassis. It says 825 watt right on the bottom right corner of the power supply. Okay, so here's our EVGA graphics card. This is the 1080 Ti SC2. Um, they've done some upgrades compared to the regular SC to help with cooling. Um, here's our 6-pin and our 8-pin power that are required for this card. And here are the connections. We got a DVI, uh, three display ports, and an HDMI port. So it's a pretty pretty solid card, lots of ports, lots of active ports. Um, here's our uh, dual uh, female 6-pin to 8-pin male. And this is a pretty standard adapter. This one actually came with our graphics card. And if you know, sometimes they come with them, sometimes they don't. It depends on the manufacturer. This is the car, or this is the adapter that we had to order off Newegg. This did not come with the card, does not come with the system. This is a six pin male to SATA port. And we're basically going to steal some power from the five and a quarter inch optical drive or media reader that we're not using. So if you have one of those installed, uh, you may have to uh, stop using it if you want to install this graphics card. So, all right, so let's install the actual graphics card. We're going to put it in that blue slot and we this is going to require two of the pci slots because it's a pretty big card basically i have to move those retention clips up and then this card's pretty heavy so be very careful when you pick this card up and line it up with your slot it's kind of hard to see because we have an mvma card above but basically line it up be very careful don't drop this card it's very heavy and line it up and let it drop right in and it will drop in because it's pretty heavy and then go ahead and lock in your blue retention clips okay so now we have to plug in our auxiliary power so we're going to start first with our SATA connection because we're going to steal from the optical drive to basically plug in or get our power for our six pin connection. Now we're, we still have an optical drive in because we're using the slim line optical drive. So we're just taking power from the five and a quarter inch slot. Again, if you have a media reader or a five and a quarter inch uh, optical drive, you're probably gonna have to get rid of it if you want to install this graphics card. So plug that in, plug into your six pin, and that takes care of our six pin power. That's the issue that a lot of other people were running into. Um, that's it, you can pick it up on Newegg um took me about six weeks to get it because it came from somewhere in asia all right so now we've got our dual six pin to a pin adapter now if you have the a25 watt power supply which we talked about earlier this cable is standard inside the workstation and now i'm talking the yellow cable not the black cable so that cable will be standard plugged into the power distribution board. If it's not installed, that means you probably have the uh, lower wattage power supply. So basically clip that adapter in, and then all you have to do is plug it right into 
your 8-pin auxiliary port on your graphics card. And check your connections. Now, let's say you're like, oh, I don't have one of these adapters and I'm just going to roll the dice um, and try to you know, use this system without basically installing those adapters, well, it, it's going to hold on post and it's not going to let you boot to your OS. So make sure you have those adapters installed because you won't be able to use it if you don't do that. All right, here's what it looks like installed in the system. Looks nice and pretty, fits perfectly. All right, so once you have the hardware installed and we're done with that, we've got our side panel back on, you have to go and install the latest driver or you want to. Um, so go to NVIDIA.com, click on GeForce Drivers. There's an option to do auto detect if you don't want to navigate this page. Um, we're going to go basically right to the item GeForce 10 series cards. And it's already picked our 1080 Ti. And we have Windows 10 Pro 64 bit. So search it. Pick the latest driver. Sometimes the latest driver is beta. So it's up to you whether you want to try the beta version. I always try the latest release version. So download that, install it. Uh, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to do that, maybe faster. Once you install it, there's something called the GeForce Experience, and we're in the GeForce Experience right now. And this is super cool because it will basically find all of your games, and it will allow you to click on those games, and we'll do that on, let's see, we'll pick Fortnite. And it will allow you to optimize, optimize the graphics based on your graphics cards or graphics card and so we've done it and put it's put everything on epic um, that's a really cool feature um, and then it'll also allow you to search the latest drivers um, and it'll tell you when you need a new driver now you'll log into that either through nvidia or you'll have to use like facebook or google um, but it's definitely an awesome feature if you game um, this is really cool you'll definitely want to use that and then when you install the driver you'll obviously get the latest control panel this is great for setting up multiple displays, changing your refresh rate, changing resolutions. Uh, there you can do a whole bunch of different things with the NVIDIA control panel. Okay, so now we are going to do a benchmark test. But before we do our benchmark test, it's important to know our complete rig because the test that we're going to run is basically inside of a game called Tom Clancy's the, the the division and it's an awesome game for benchmark testing because it uses a ton of gpu um, and as well as cpu so it really tests your system so this is what we have uh, installed um, e5 2637 v3 processor a 32 gig of ram 500 gig nvme drive um, and then obviously our 1080 ti sc2 evga um, so it's a pretty nice rig. It should, it should. Uh, we're expecting well over 100 frames per second. Um, we've got custom settings. We did turn VSync off because it typically maxes at 60 FPS, but everything is on either high or ultra, and we're using the optimized um, configuration per the GeForce experience. So, and this game, it, it, you can't tell in this video, but this game looks extremely crisp with this configuration graphics card. Um, so we basically want to see what our average FPS, typical FPS, our CPU usage, and our GPU usage. And again, we are expecting to be over 100 FPS because this configuration is a monster. Um, and the, you know, when you pay, you know, about $800 for a graphics card, you just expect over 100 FPS. So let's take a look and see what we got. And wait for it. Takes so much time to load. And here we go. So we had 131.5 average FPS, typical F, uh, FPS 132.7. Um, average GPU was 90%. And average CPU was 76%. So the GPU took a lot of the strain. Um, 131 frames is pretty awesome. I mean, that's that's you know exactly what I was expecting that we should get. Now you can raise those FPS by tweaking the settings if you don't care, you know, uh, about shadows or some other settings. You can tweak it and you know try to push for closer to 200 FPS. Um, and uh, but that's kind of you know completely up to 
to your uh, to what you'd like to do. So that's uh, I'd say that's a pretty positive test. Um, I would definitely recommend this install for gaming um, if you have the budget for it. Um, if you've never visited GreenPCGamers.com, you should check it out for additional content on Precision Workstations, IBM Workstations, and HP Workstations. We go through systems and show you awesome upgrades to optimize them for gaming or any sort of computing. Um, follow GreenPCGamers.com on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We get a lot of extra parts when we're doing these uh, tests or these videos. Um, graphics cards, you know, NVMe cards, um, lots of cool stuff. So definitely follow us, and uh, we tend to do random giveaways, and we give away some of our access gear. Um, and then if you have live questions, definitely follow me on Twitch, uh, JBigTicket23. Um, you, you can ask live hardware questions in between gaming. Um, and as always, if you like what you're seeing here on YouTube, definitely subscribe to the YouTube page. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment below. Um, thank you so much for watching.